Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to the first video, the opening video of Big Finish Month. So right now I'm going to do many videos which are going to be about Big Finish. With three segments with different themes. With segment one being the Big Finish classics and I will confirm all the videos here. This one will be a review of the series, the title, I'll say by the title. And in the second video I'll be looking in depth at my Doctor Who Big Finish collection. Some of the Murphy range 1 to 25. Then a discussion video talking about the early years of Big Finish. Fourth video being a review of Project Twilight. The penultimate video being a review of Dark Eyes being heavily requested. It replaced the two masks as it did. That will still be uploaded but as an unofficial video of Big Finish Month. But so that video was so highly requested I am going to do it. And in the last video being the top 10 monthly range stories from 1 to 50. Then segment 2 being about the Big Finish writers and then segment 3 being big Big Finish videos. Yeah I hope everyone enjoys Big Finish man. But for the first video of course we should in depth review The Sirens of Time. The first Doctor Who Big Finish audio. I've reviewed this one in the past during 2014 but the review is not good. So it would be nice to take another look at it and do an in depth review of it. So I hope everyone Enjoys Big Finish Month and the review of the Sirens of Time. So I'm going to go straight to my review of this release. Then there's the time down below. We have or haven't skipped. Of course, let's begin the video. So for the showcasing of the Sirens of Time with the Doctor Who logo by there, the Sirens of Time. Featuring the 6th, 5th and 7th Doctor with uh, the Sirens of Time entity in the background or just a simple white effect. And a nice blend of red, pink and orange blended in the background with the Big Finish logo. And an audio adventure drama starring Peter Davison, Colin Baker and Sylvester McCoy. And in the brand new adventures of Doctor Who on the side. For the spine of the release, we have the Doctor Who logo by there, Doctor Who, the Sirens of Time. Number one in the Big Finish logo with a lovely spine. Then for the back we have a four part story showing off the main cast written and directed by Nicholas Briggs bar on the story which I'll place in the description barcode, the running time and other bits of information Then for inside the signs of time we have the booklet and the two discs We have part 1 and part 2 by there with the lovely reflective CDs part 3 and part 4 and a picture of the signs of time Then for the booklet itself Oh wrong page we have the front page showing the credits on the story, some cast pictures, what it would look like if they showcased each of the parts, and then other advertisements such as the other Big Finish audios, Beneath Starfield, and two of the BBC books being Unnatural History and Storm Harvest. So that was the presentation and the showcasing of the Sirens of Time. Now to the review. Review of the Sirens of Time. The first Doctor Who Big Finish audio just a year after the first Big Finish audio. Oh no, it isn't. They got the Doctor Who license and they were allowed to use the Doctor as the character and Doctor Who as the title. And yeah, on my first review, or should I say the bad review of Sirens of Time, I gave it a 7 out of 10, which was a good rating, but of course, when time goes on, obviously ratings and opinions will change on something. Do I like it even more? Do I find it average? It's obvious when I say this. The Silence of Time does have its fair share of problems. However, this goes to all Big Finish fans, The Silence of Time is one you need to check out in the future because it was the first Doctor Who Big Finish story and that's why it's remembered by people. Yeah, back in the early days of Big Finish, they were pretty much on their baby feet at this time. And you can see with the first like few Big Finish monthly range audios, they didn't really got up on their own two feet straight away. They had some problems like pacing out the stories, the storyline, maybe some of the writing was rather weak. But still they had some classics back in the day like the Fearmonger, Marion Conspiracy, Genocide Machine, the Apocalypse Element, the Holy Terror etc etc. They did have some classics but they were a little bit up and down, they're just getting ready. You can't really blame that really as a negative because when everyone starts out of doing something, of course you will improve off it. Of course, I am going to address its negatives, obviously, because it does have some, but it's not a story I consider bad. As I said, Big Finish, they only were just getting started near this point. 
so there's bound to be negatives. Hey, let's just talk about my 2013 and 2014 content. Yeah, bad, right? This goes with everything, not just big finish. When people start out doing something, there's bound to be some stuff which will take some time until you're good at it. And yeah, very quickly, big finish got good at doing big finish audios pretty quickly. The first strong one, I would say, is the Theomonger. That's where they just went off their baby feet and they delivered some classics. Not only that, it wasn't difficult for the people at Big Finish, but also the actors and the performers. So as Justin McCoy, Colin Baker, Peter Davidson, the supporting characters, getting their first feel of audio, especially you know the main doctors like Sylvester McCoy doing like an uh, official Doctor Who audio so some of them may be nervous a little bit and yeah acting in front of a camera to do voice acting is a lot different yeah for the first Doctor Who big finish audio and it's obvious why they did this they went for an ambitious one I mean what's there not to like here when you see the Sirens of Time when it was first released of course it made people excited three classic Doctors on there the fifth Doctor, sixth and seventh which is definitely an interesting move even though it looks good we just have to think what about the story itself is the pacing good the storyline the actors are their performances good the drive of the story sound design the plot everything else will that live up now as I said this was an ambitious story and I would say it was too ambitious it seems like Big Finish went too high at the start and this is where Silence of Time gets a lot of problems with people it has a very diversified you know opinions to Silence of Time Big Finish started out too ambitious, but yeah, it makes sense why they went really ambitious because they wanted to show themselves off. Again, Sirens of Time isn't really hated or really loved, it gets rather average to good reviews, like 4 out of 10s, 5 out of 10s, 6 out of 10s, 7 out of 10s, 8 out of 10s, and maybe a few 9s or even 10s, it depends if it's like a classic one to you, if this was your first Big Finish audio, you probably have some love for it, like nostalgia, which makes perfect sense. But yeah, Sirens of Time is a diversified one, and diversified audios are some of my favourite things to review. Because then I can explain to everyone of why people may like the Sirens of Time, and then may not like the Sirens of Time. And as well, it's nice to see which direction it goes, do I like it or do I hate it. Yeah, an interesting first story but too ambitious. But yeah, as main summary, it will grab anyone's attention. Sound of Doctrine Part 1, the 5th Doctrine Part 2, the 6th Doctrine Part 3, and all together in Part 4. See, so yeah, that was my review opening and the summary. Now to the in-depth review and characters and performances. I'm doing them both at the same time because really one of the main drives of this story is the characters. So I'm gonna do them both together. So yes, now to the in-depth review and the characters. Yes, to part one. This one features the Seventh Doctor. This is the Seventh Doctor's story. And if I'm honest, I found this part to be average. You can see the style of the writing. It's nothing compared of what Nick Briggs has done recently. Stuff like Dark Eyes, Return to Telos, Only the Monstrous. And with the Sirens of Time being Nicholas Briggs's first big finish story, of course he will have some problems, but yeah, him as a writer, he can look past those problems and improve on them for other stories, and of course Nick Brace has got better through time. And he's done some classics like The Creatures of Beauty, that was a very interesting Matrix story, how it was like constructed to say the least. Nowhere Place, love it. Dark Eyes, of course, brilliant. Only the Monstrous, a very good set. He's a brilliant writer, and the story does have brilliant moments that Nick Briggs did very well. Yeah, for a first audio, the sound design is magnificent, which is probably by Nicholas Briggs. He probably did the music and sound design for this story. It was absolutely marvelous. Like, to just the spaceships crashing on the planet it sounds so realistic. It was really well done. The sound design is brilliant in the story. However, there were some annoying things in part one, such as the constant laughing by the witch in part one, which was very repetitive. I stated in my first review that was a little bit like the constant laughing and screaming in the abandoned. It gets very repetitious. There's nothing wrong with all the levels of sound design. It's all perfect. Nothing like Necromantia. No, really, that has some atrocious sound design levels. Yeah, Necromantia, it's not just bad with story, but it's bad with like how it was made. But anyway, we're not talking about bloody Necromantia. You can see compared to the Beneath Summerfield stories in this one, they implemented 
a lot more sound design and levels. They went a little bit more crazy with all of them. Of course, they wanted to show off their first Doctor Who Big Finish release. So, it's obvious why they did that. They tried to make the audio as good as possible, which is fine. And yet that which character was voiced by Maggie Stables. That's the person who voices Evelyn. I actually couldn't believe it when I looked at the cast list. I thought, my word, is it really Maggie Stables? Yeah, her character actually has an overarching part of this story. She comes back in part four. I'm not going to say what she's doing. But she makes some sort of deal with the Knights of Valashar. Probably not how you pronounce their names, but actually they have like quite an interesting story. I'm not talking about just in the science of time, but in the Doctor Who universe, they are connected into the Dalek Empire series, which sounds quite interesting. Yeah, for a little bit of information on the Knights of Valashar, they were in a Dalek war, which was featured in Dalek Empire. Yeah, part one's direction, it takes the story quite ambiguous, not really revealing anything. Yeah, like all cliffhangers being part one, two, and three, they're not explained. It's a little bit frustrating when they don't actually reveal what the cliffhangers are, how they got out of the situation, all the doctors. It doesn't reveal that, or it doesn't really give any indication of how. It might have been talked about, I may have missed it, but obviously, if that was, they didn't do it very well. But I actually double-checked on this, and a lot of people say that the cliffhangers are not revealed, so I'm probably right on that point. So yeah, part one, it features the Seventh Doctor. This is the Seventh Doctor's part, part one. And I think in my review, I said his performances were very good. I must have been on drugs or something back then, because when I... Listen to part one again, I completely disagree. The South Doctor for me, I think Sylvester McCoy had the hardest time getting into this audio or audios in general. But yeah, for story order, this will probably feature sometime after Lumbarrow, as there's a few Doctor Who stories after Lumbarrow, which features the South Doctor on his own solo. You know, after Lumbarrow, the Doctor was just so dark, secretive, and manipulative. And yeah, he had his dark moments in part one, but comedy was being utilized a bit too much and that shouldn't have been the case. Nothing wrong with throwing jokes left and right but I think his comedy was being utilised a bit too much. Sylvester McCoy it felt like he had some trouble getting into the audio. Sometimes when the South Doctor was shouting it didn't really sound realistic nor believable. Yeah most of the characters in part one were very uninteresting and not very investing. Except for the overarching character even though the witch character played by Maggie Stables was a little bit grating. Still, she had some overarching plots which made me go, hmm, this seems quite interesting. And as well, the female character voiced by Sarah Moat, who was Alina, I believe. You can see some overarching, you can definitely see something overarching right by there. Yeah, part one is pretty ambiguous. Oh yeah, we do have a character in this one, quite overarching within the story, which is Coordinator Vanzel. Classic Big Finish fans will know who he is, especially Craig Hinton fans as well. Because Coordinator Vanzel has appeared in the Apocalypse Element, and as well, Doctor Who books, I believe he was in Quantum Arts Angel. And he's in Time's Champion, that gorgeous book over there. Yeah, classic Blue Finish fans and book fanatics, well, more Craig Hinton fans will know that character. Yeah, this is how part one goes. The Doctor lands on a distant, swampy planet. A character drowning in quicksand, a crazy witch, and then bio-assassins attempting to kill the Doctor and setting up ambiguous plot lines. And yeah, that's part one. And part one feels a little bit empty, it does. They could have thrown in a little bit more. Just to be part one feels a little bit empty. And with the ambiguous plot lines as well, this is not a lot going for episode one, but it's rather bland. I would say this is my least favorite part of Simon's of Time. It does get better after part one, so. That's a good thing. So Silence of Time, I'd say it does get better when it moves along. So that's a good thing when an audio does that. But not a bad start either, it's just average. Part 2, things open up a little bit more now. And this is the part featuring the 5th Doctor in story order. This will be summer after the 5 Doctors. And yeah, the 5th Doctor is on a German U-boat in World War One. Lovely setting. I do like that the story's refreshing. Each part is a different location. I would say his drive is not bad, actually. The drive of the story is okay. It's paced out quite well. That's not really the negatives I get with the signs of time. Pacing is actually pretty good. And the drive, it moves at a nice steady pace. But in part two, you can see the story direction of what Nicholas Brace is doing. He's going for something more paradoxical. And this is where the story becomes very 
ambitious. So for some fans, the story may be a little bit messed up, and it is messed up in some places, because it doesn't justify itself in all of its areas, and some of it even unexplained. The parts which aren't justified are really just uh, swept under the rug and I ignore them. That's some of the parts of the Sirens of Time, especially the cliffhangers. The German characters are actually very well done. We have like Mark Gatiss playing the captain. He did a very good job. Very versatile actor, Mark Gatiss. It's nice to see him in the Unbound Universe playing the master. And as well, we have John Wadmore playing the lieutenant. With the fifth doctor, I say to myself, actually his performances are pretty good and his characterization is actually pretty good. You know, we see the fifth doctor have a connection to his TARDIS and he would put his own life at risk to recover the TARDIS, like having a really nice connection with the TARDIS. That's very nice because the TARDIS is very important to him. You know, the German character is something suspicious happening with them. One of them is possessed by someone or something. Yeah, it's not bio assassins in part two, they're just uh, gone away in part one. Part two is better than part one, absolutely, because the fifth Doctor is actually very well characterized and marvelous performances and the supporting characters I actually liked and I got invested with their characters. The German accents were brilliant by Mark Gatiss and John Watmore and were very believable, so brilliant performances to them. Part two, my favorite. I'd say it's like the best like subplot out of all of them I would say but the Sixth Doctor's performance is what wins it for me and yeah part three is the Sixth Doctor's part where they are stuck in a star cruiser. Not really strong with plot or characters but the main reason of why I liked part three was because of the Sixth Doctor's performance. Out of all of them the Sixth Doctor felt like he really got into the action he loved being in this audio, had no problems whatsoever. He felt like he was definitely a man for voice acting. You can tell that Colin Baker really enjoyed this and still he enjoys Big Finish to this date. Part 3's story is very forgettable I would say, but still you can see where the overarching plot is with one of the characters and as well Colin Baker's performance. I think that's the only thing that got me through Part 3. But yeah, Part 4 we have all the Doctors together takes a very paradoxical turn and with its reveals as well. The reveal, not that surprising if I'm honest, because someone like that has happened before in other Doctor Who stories. The direction of the reveal was a little bit predictable, but not entirely, because the ending to it, yeah, it took me for a little bit of, hmm, didn't expect that, but still, not really surprising, because I did predict a little bit of it. But yeah, I'm not talking about the time I listened to the Simon at the time, I haven't listened to this in a very long time, about two years, and pretty much forgot everything about it. I can remember anything about it except for the cliffhangers not being revealed. Reveals like this have been done before but a lot better such as Master, that big finish story Master, the reveal in that one is so unpredictable, scary, chilling and powerful. That's how you nail a character reveal or plot reveal. Master does it brilliantly. But the best things on Science of Time for me is Colin Baker's performance because he got right into the action of the audio. He seemed like he really enjoyed himself. He wasn't really written like in the TV series, like a bit arrogant and rude but very calm and relaxed. The Sixth Doctor, Colin Baker himself felt very relaxed in the audio, didn't feel nervous. He just did 100% and nailed. Fifth Doctor, Peter Davidson actually did pretty good in the audio but the Seventh Doctor was the one who really crumbled. But still, he's done some classics and he was brilliant in the Fearmonger and the Genocide Machine. For my favourite performer, I would probably give that to Sarah Mouat's character. As she was playing four characters here, and each of these characters had different traits, different characteristics, and they felt like different characters. So that's good to Nicholas Briggs and Sarah Mouat, who played those four characters, being Alina, Helen, Ellie, and a commander. But this is the problem with the Science of Time. It just doesn't justify itself in all its areas. It doesn't give the answers to the cliffhangers. The subplot stories aren't very engaging or invest in the fifth Doctor when I said, yeah, had its moments, but that was really just about the characters and not about the story. The overall story is formulaic. It doesn't really have any investing ideas or elements within the story. You know, it's got quite paradoxical storytelling and maybe a little bit messy for some people. It doesn't justify itself in all the areas. That's the problem. So 
So to conclude, what do I think about the Sirens of Time? Well, of course, it isn't the best Big Finish audio of all time. It's their first Doctor Who one, but it's still a good story. It's just got a lot of problems because it just doesn't justify itself in all its areas. When you do a paradoxical story, you've got to justify it. It's got to make sense and you can't leave parts unexplained. Otherwise, the story will become messy. So why would people like the Sirens of Time? Probably because, well, there's a lot of people who started out Big Finish with the Sirens of Time, so they get a lot of nostalgia from it. But yes, for the people who don't like it, probably my reason of why people do not like the story, because it just doesn't justify itself in all its areas, and it was too ambitious. The story was way too ambitious to start with Big Finish. Again, it makes sense why they went at this, because they wanted to show themselves off. Of course, they need to make their first Big Finish release a big one, but it was far too ambitious. It does have some good moments, and I do recommend you give it a shot. So I give The Sirens of Time a 6 out of 10. A good story it has its moments, it has its character moments, but the story is formulaic. It doesn't justify itself in its areas, which needs to be done when you're going for a paradoxical story. Otherwise, it's going to be messy. So yes, thanks for watching my review of The Sirens of Time. Yes, maybe I sound like a miserable bastard when doing the review. But hey, you have to look on both sides of the same coin. There's positives to everything, and there's negatives to everything. You can't really do a review of just discussing the positives, and you can't do a review just discussing the negatives. You have to look on both the sides. And yet, there's a lot of problems with it, but I still have enjoyment for it. It's still a story which people need to check out. I was thinking about giving it a 5, but I do have this sort of enjoyment for it. So yeah, that was my review of The Sirens of Time. So for the next video of Big Finish, which might be in segment 1, it is my in-depth Big Finish collection on the monthly range 1 to 25. So see you in that video, and of course, have a good one. <laughs>